September 1983, I'm a single dad working as a chef, cooking for the Jesuit priest six days a week. My day off is Saturday. On this particular Saturday, I go to a talk in Hollywood, computer graphics, art technology of the future. Speaking was Art Dorinsky. Now he's one of the guys that worked on my favorite movie, Tron. With him was David M. He's the artist in residence at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Now, see, I thought JPL was just full of rocket scientists, but here's this creative mind making these amazing images of space. And together, they demonstrate how computers take ones and zeros and turn them into three-dimensional images. Now, remember, this is 1983. There's no cell phones, there's no internet. No one's ever seen images like this before. After the talk, we're invited to sit in front of this massive computer with this huge drawing pad. And for a few minutes, I get to use the first computer where I could actually see on the screen what I was drawing while I was drawing it. I have never been so captivated in all my life. I knew right then and there, this is what I want to do. I want to make images on computers. Well, I'm thinking that, how can I do this? I'm a chef. I don't, I'm, my images are made with meat and vegetables, not ones and zeros. Well, the next day, I am at the Jesuit kitchen, and Father Tom comes up to me after lunch and says, how was your day off? I went to Hollywood. I got to listen to these guys talk about computer animation. I got to draw on a graphics computer. That's what I want to do with my life. I want to spend my days drawing and animating images. Okay then, how are you going to make that future a reality? Uh, I don't know. What, what am I going to do? Here I am, overwhelmed by the scope of this future I desperately want with no concept of where to begin. I was paralyzed. Father Tom reached out on my shoulder and said, Mark, breathe. When you don't know where to begin, start by making a list. A list helps you plan to reach the goal. It's just like making your menu. And he led me over to the board where I normally drew the day's menu and he cleaned it off and he said, okay, who are you going to call? 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 Uh, I guess I could call the guys who taught the class. Great, write that down. And I could call the people who made the computer. Yeah, put that down too. And I could call the guys who produced the event. It went on and on like that until that board was covered with words and drawings and scribbles. Well, the very next day, I start calling everybody on that list, the guys who taught the class, the computer manufacturer, everybody. Each call led to another call which set up more calls until before you know it, I'm on the phone with Bill Kovacs, the vice president at Robert Abel's, a Hollywood production company that had worked on Tron. And he's a pioneer in computer animation. Now, I live in Santa Barbara, and turns out we have a Santa Barbara connection. Bill visits his family there on the weekends and loves it. We hit it off instantly. He invited me to come visit the facility. Next call, my buddy Larry, a local entrepreneur also fascinated with computers. And I tell him, you've got to come with me on a field trip to Hollywood to see this computer animation company. Well, we head to LA. And on the tour, we're in this darkened room where programmers are gathered around a monitor looking at the 1984 CBS election graphics in 3D. I am inches away. I can't believe that just a few weeks earlier, I was drawing on a computer, and here I am in front of a live animation production. My future feels so close, I can almost taste it. 
Walking out the door, Larry says, the opportunity here is limitless. We should build our own production company. Yes, we should. So we invite Bill to lunch to thank him and tell him about our preposterous, impetuous idea to build a production company in Santa Barbara. Then we had a crazy idea. We proposed to him, leave all this. Join us. Let's start a new venture. He did. And just like that, Wavefront Technologies was born. Wait, 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 what just happened? In less than an hour, we went from fans of computers to energized entrepreneurs, ready to seize the opportunity to work with the vice president of an award-winning animation company. There was just one problem. I don't know how to build an animation company. <laughs> Neither did Larry. What are we gonna do? We have no idea. Where do we start? <sighs> More paralysis. And I flash back to standing with Father Tom at that board with the words and the drawings and the scribbles and the deeper lessons that he shared with me that day clicked. And I realized that when you don't know where to begin, picture your path and you'll own the outcome. That insight inspired us to create a system we used to build our new company and fundamentally changed how I solve problems to this day. We all have problems in our life. Some of them are trivial and easily dealt with, but what about the tough ones? Like wanting to change your career or starting an organization that's gonna focus on the environment or working with your community to solve some injustice. Many people would let the scope of those challenges stop them. But it is worth your effort to focus on these. These days, everyone wants one-click solutions to life. They want someone else to solve their problems. But they're your problems to solve and your rewards to earn. Now, with my background as a chef, I think of problems as recipes. They have steps, a beginning, a middle, and an end, and a list of ingredients. Recipes are predictable and reliable in this wonderfully creative playground. Creativity isn't an ability. It's not an innate talent. It's a mindset. You choose to think, to play, to innovate without judgment. So the next time you are overwhelmed with the scope of an amazing opportunity and you don't know where to begin, I invite you to try my five-step recipe. It uses creativity to help you picture the path so you'll own the outcome. I call it see what you think. Step one, begin with a breath. First step's easy, breathe and exhale slowly. Do it with me. Feels good, doesn't it? Slow breathing calms your mind and nervous system long enough so you can make good decisions. Now you can explore whether that great opportunity is a good idea or not. Do you really want to solve the problem? Or should you let it go by? If you choose to accept it, then own it. It's your opportunity, belongs to no one else. And when you own it, you'll feel committed and ready to take the next step. Step number two, dive in and discover. Chances are, initially, you won't know much about the problem, much less how to solve it. The hack is in recognizing that not knowing is actually a good place to start. Now you can learn everything there is to know about that opportunity. Look at it from every angle. 
This is where the list comes in. Every question you have, put it up on the board. Keep asking yourself, what else is there to know? What else? I mean, if you run out of questions, here's a couple of ideas. Who could guide you? What are you going to need to do to push your project forward? Where can you go for more information? Now, what I also want you to do is then uh, we're going to take that list and then we're going to move over to step number three, which is cluster the chaos. Now, you're going to organize the list so you can make sense of that complexity. Now, looking at that list, there are some things that are going to be, need to be done first, second, third, and so forth. And what I want you to do is draw a box and take and put, we're going to label those boxes, who do you need to talk to, what needs to be done, and where are you going to go for more information. Then put a box down at the bottom called the parking lot. Then take the first item, put it into one of the boxes, and then start moving all the rest of the items into the box until the list is completely empty. Then look at the parking lot, because most things are going to be easy to organize. Some of them just won't fit at all. For those, put them in the parking lot. You can deal with them later. Step number four, make a map. Looking back at the clustered list, considered which items need to be done first, second, and so forth. Here's where a picture helps you map out your upcoming journey. Start by drawing a curved line that goes to the top of the page, and then put a circle down at the beginning and a larger one at the top. That bigger circle represents the big goal you're trying to achieve. Write the goal up in that circle, and then put today's date down in the bottom. Then, looking back at your list, ask yourself, are there some clear milestones that need to be done? If there are, put those up on the path. A milestone might be getting funding, hiring an assistant, getting a business license. Then look at the rest of the list and start putting items on the path and think about what order they're going to need to be in on that path. Now make sure everything goes onto your map. Now look at the parking lot. Are there some items there that belong on the path? Or do they need paths of their own? Step number five, get up and go. It's time to take the first step. Looking back at your completed map, don't let it overwhelm you. Instead, commit to taking the first step. And when you do, celebrate. Congratulations, you've done one in a row. Each step along the path transforms you, builds energy and momentum. And as you continue along the path, you're changing. You're becoming a better version of yourself. Now, I want you to take the map and put it up on a wall. And each time you take a step, mark it off. Now, your path may change. You're going to take side trips. We all do. But keep track of them, because they may lead to incredible outcomes of their own. That's the recipe. The next time you feel overwhelmed by the scope of a great challenge and you don't know where to begin, see what you think. Begin with a breath. Dive in and discover. Cluster the chaos, make a map, then get up and go. In a world where opportunities present themselves to us every day, and you don't know where to begin, picture your path. You'll own the outcome. Thank you.